Hey guys, hopefully you guys have already done the reading on this assignment on compound subjects and verbs. It's a short reading and basically what it says is that a compound subject is when you have more than one subject for the sentence uh, that is doing the same verb or verbs and a compound verb is when you have more than one verb being done by the same subject or subjects. So compound just means more than one. So more than one subject and more than one verb. So we've already talked about how to diagram subjects and verbs, and we actually already talked about how to diagram compound subjects. We already talked about how to diagram two or three subjects. Today, I wanna to talk with you really quick about how to diagram compound verbs. So we're gonna go over a brief review of what we already discussed about diagramming subjects and verbs. And then we're going to introduce a few new things with diagramming compound verbs. All right, so let's get started. So just a few quick slides of review on what we talked about about diagramming subjects and verbs already. So when you're diagramming a basic subject and verb, if you've got one subject and one verb, it's very simple. You draw a horizontal line and then you draw a vertical line dividing it in two. And in front of the vertical line, you put the subject and after the vertical line, you put the verb. So we can see that here. Then we talked about diagramming actually a compound subject. So if you have two subjects and we talked about this rocket ship shaped structure that you put the two subjects on joined by the conjunction, which is usually and but not always. So you've got subject and subject in front of the vertical line. And then you've still got the vertical line, you've got a horizontal line afterward with the verb. So this is how you diagram a compound subject that is two subjects with one verb. And then we also talked about how to diagram a compound subject that is three subjects with one verb. So same rocket ship shape structure, you just add another line and you've got subject and subject and subject and then you've got the vertical line and the horizontal line afterwards with the verb. So that's what we talked about late last week when we were talking about diagramming subjects and verbs. Now, when you've got a compound verb, that is you have more than one verb for the same subject, it's going to look something like this. So we're gonna still use that rocket ship shaped structure and you can see we've got the same thing right, same rocket ship shaped structure. You can imagine it as a rocket with flames coming out. Um, but you've got it on the other side. You've got the a subject on the horizontal line first, and then you've got the vertical line. And then after the vertical line, you've got the rocket ship shaped structure with the verb, the conjunction and on the dotted line, just like we did with the subject and then the other verb. And again, you're going to list these in order. So uh, whichever verb comes first, you're going to put on the top, and whichever verb comes second, you're going to put on the bottom. Now, let's look at some practical examples of this with some actual sentences. So here's our first sentence. The baby ate and slept. So like we've been talking about when you're trying to locate the subject and the verb of a sentence and figure out what the core of the sentence is, it's helpful to start with the verb or verbs first. So we're going to look for action words. And here we've got two action words, ate and slept. All right, so those are our verbs. And then we ask who or what before the verbs. So who or what ate and slept? And the answer to that is baby. All right, so we've got our subject, and we notice we have two action words, so two verbs. So that's gonna be diagrammed something like this. All right, so just like the structure I showed you, before the vertical line, we've got a horizontal line with the one subject, baby. And then afterwards, we've got the rocket ship shape structure. And we've put our first verb, eight, up here and our second verb slept down here. And then we've got the conjunction and on the dotted line in the middle. All right, so that gives you a basic idea. Let's look at one example that has a few more words in the sentence that we have to maybe look a little bit harder to find the subject and verb. Right. Peter knelt and cleaned his sword on the grass. 
All right, so there are a few more words, but remember, right now, we're just looking for subjects and verbs. We're ignoring the other sentences. So the first thing that we could ignore is a prepositional phrase on the grass. We know that a prepositional phrase is never going to have a subject or a verb in it. So we've crossed that out. We know that's not going to be the subject or verb, so let's look for our action words. And we've got two. We've got knelt, and we have cleaned two action words, right? And then we'll ask who or what before the verb, who knelt and cleaned? Well, that's an easy one. Peter knelt and cleaned. All right, so we've identified the subject and the two verbs. The diagram is gonna look the same as it did in the last one. So it's going to look something like this. All right, again, we've got Peter, the subject on the horizontal line in front of the vertical line. And then after the vertical line, we've got the rocket ship shaped structure, and we've got knelt and cleaned in their proper order, and we've got the word and on the dotted line in the middle. All right, but what if we have the same subject doing three different actions? It's going to be pretty much the same as if we had three subjects just on the other side of the diagram, right? So it'll just be flipped. So it will look something like this. The subject on a single horizontal line before the vertical line that divides the subject and verb. And then after the vertical line, we'll have that rocket ship shaped structure, but we'll have added another line in the middle for our third verb. And again, we will put those three verbs in order. The first one on the top, the second one in the middle, and the last one on the bottom. So let's look at an example of that with an actual sentence. All right, so we've got the white witch screamed, slapped Edmund, and told him never to mention Aslan's name again. Maybe you guys remember that scene from the play this fall. So we've got to locate the verbs in here, and we know um, that we're not looking for all of the words. We're not going to diagram all of the words. We're just trying to get the simple subject and the simple verb. Now, there are multiple verbs in this one. So we're going to want to pay attention to that. So let's look for action words. Um, we've got a few, but we're going to have to make sure that we don't get too confused because there's one in here that's not actually part of the verb. So we do have the white witch screamed. That's one action word. Slapped. That's another action word, and those are both part of the verb told is an action word and that's also part of the verb so those are our three you may notice that the word mention is an action word but here um, it's not part of the main verb because we've got this word to in front of it so remember if a verb's got to in front of it you treat it like you would a prepositional phrase it's not actually a prepositional phrase because it's followed by a verb not a noun but uh, treat it like you would a prepositional phrase if an action word has two in front of it, because that means it's not actually part of the main verb. Uh, it's another type of uh, verb construction that we may get into later this year if we have time. So we've got our three action words, scream, slapped, and told. And then we're looking for who screamed, slapped, and told. We've got a couple people in here, Edmund and the White Witch, but Edmund did not scream, slap, and tell. It is the White Witch who screamed, slapped, and told. So we've got our subject. We've got our three verbs. All right, so the diagram is going to look something like this. All right, we've got the White Witch in the subject spot on that horizontal line. We've got the vertical line. And then we've got the rocket shape structure with three lines for verbs, since we have three verbs. And we have them in order, screamed, slapped, and told. All right, now, it is also possible for you to have two subjects doing the same two actions. So if that is the case, this is what your diagram would look like. You would actually have the rocket ship shape structure on both sides of the vertical line that divides the subject and the verb. So you would have subject and subject on one side, vertical line, and then verb and verb on the other side. So let's look at a practical example with a sentence. Edmund and Lucy entered the wardrobe and explored Narnia. All right, so we're looking for action words, and we've got a couple clear action words, entered and explored. 
And then who entered and explored? Well, it's not just Edmund who entered and explored, and it's not just Lucy who entered and explored. It's actually both Edmund and Lucy who entered and explored. So we here have a compound subject, two subjects, and a compound verb, two verbs. So our diagram is going to have that rocket ship shaped structure on both sides, and it's going to look like this. Edmund and Lucy on one side on the rocket ship shaped structure and entered and explored on the other side on the rocket shaped ship structure. Rocket ship shaped structure. I said that backwards. Um, don't forget as well, whenever you've got a compound, you want to have the conjunction, usually and, but not always there on the dotted line. All right, guys, so time for a little more practice. I've got a few sentences below this video for you guys to diagram. As always, you can use the online Let's Diagram program, or you could diagram them on paper and scan uh, or take a picture and upload it to me. So I hope you guys uh, have a pretty easy time with this diagramming exercise and with the new subjects and verbs worksheet that we'll be looking at compound subjects and verbs. And if you have any questions, make sure to call me, email me, or send me a message on Canvas and I will try to help you out. Have a great day, guys.